this is Quan, and today I'm going to show you good modding practices for XCOM 2. First, open your mod buddy. This is mod buddy. Mod buddy's your friend. It's a terrible little UI, but I think it's great for how terrible it is. First, the first thing you should always do before making any mods is create a default folder. What the default folder does is be the defaults and the description does not matter because you're not going to publish this mod. What this mod does is shows you how a default mod is set up. Once it loads anyway. Come on computer. Come on. You can do it. You can. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Okay, so default mod has three files. XCOM editor.ini, which has the mod packages. Uh, name of the mod, it has XCOM Engine, which has the non-native package's name, and XCOM Game.ini, which has the DLC identifier, and that's used for the DLC list. Has an empty content folder, because this mod has nothing in it. Has a blank localization file, since by default you're not making any edits to the localization. And it has an SRC with two folders, Default Folder and XCOM Game. XCOM Game contains a whole bunch of stuff we'll get into. Uh, the default folder class is an x2 downloadable content info underscore default folder dot uc. And you can see that it contains said class. That contains two things. A static event onloaded save game and a static event install new campaign. So this first one runs once when you load the game with the mod for the first time. If there's some bookkeeping event you need to do, like say you made a weapon and you have to add it to people's inventories, this is where you do that. The example weapon shows that perfectly. The static event install new campaign is whenever you first start a campaign, it does a thing. So this is for uh, every new campaign that you start with this mod. It will call this event. But none of that really matters. What matters is XCOM game classes. Everything. Every class, every script that makes up XCOM is in this file. And you might be looking at it and you might be overwhelmed like, gee, they built a skyscraper and these are all the girders and there's just, there's literally over a thousand of them. There's enormous amount of stuff that goes into this game. Loot stuff, ATT, I don't even know what that does. Uh initial charges uh, for charge abilities all sorts of things and this might be incredibly overwhelming and you might be saying to yourself geez I just wanna make a new ability what you can do is hold control shift F and search ability and this will search every file for every instance of the word ability uh, that looks like a lot of results. How many results is that? Let me scroll to the bottom and find out. Uh, results, 519. Yeah, that's still too many results. There's a lot of things dealing with abilities. Okay, let's say I wanted to figure out the Stun Lancer shield. I'd just be like, Stun Lancer. You can't show up in too many places, can you? And uh, matching files, 10. Much, much easier to look through. Uh, game state analytics, that doesn't sound like anything ability related. Default text, uh, corpse advanced stun lancer, that's not ability related. Default weapons, uh, stun lancer weapons, man, maybe not. Default characters, loot tables, no, nah, cool, but not what we're looking for. Keep going. St ability stun lancer. Create stun lancer impairing effect ability. Oh, okay, so here we go. You just double click it, it'll take you to the class file, which is x2ability underscore stunlancer.uc, and it'll take you to the line that references that stunlancer instance, which in this case is impairing effect ability. And you can see uh, how they made the ability, that you can see the triggers, the target conditions, shooter conditions, on hit effects, like what happens when it actually hits them, creates a disoriented effect on the target. That seems to be relatively sensical. And this is how you can look through the existing files. Now let's save this default. 
Let's keep this default and never let go of it. We can just close it, never make any changes to it because this is how XCOM is. And you always want to have the ability to look at XCOM how it is. Now let's say I want to make my own mod. Uh, floppy dildo cannon launcher cannon. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, floppy cannon dildo cannon launcher cannon. Sure, description. Uh, I don't know, launches cannons that launch dildos that launch cannons? I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm not actually going to make this mod. Somebody make this mod, please, I beg you. So, this will create another solution, and projects in ModBuddy are called solutions. And the first thing you should do when creating a mod that you're actually going to upload is go to SRC, XCOM Game, Classes, Look at this beautiful class list containing all of the defaults, and then delete the XCOM game folder. Just get rid of it. Now the reason you do this is because if you do not do this, every time you upload the mod, every time someone downloads the mod, it's going to give them a copy of every class in XCOM. And that's stupid, and that's dumb, because XCOM comes with a copy of every class. So they'll have two copies from your mod, and then if Jane Smith uploads her copy, of every class, then somebody has three copies in several different folders, and it's like 20 megabytes each, and several thousand files, so it gets ridiculous quickly. Just delete that folder, uh, save every, everybody the trouble, do that before you do anything so that you don't accidentally create references that it needs, because you don't actually need, need those. You could just work on stuff, and anytime you need to add a specific file over, you can just add existing item and navigate over to where the other mods are, like, look, there's my default, and I could just go default, src, xcom game, classes, and then be like, uh, what was I looking at, Stun Lancer? Uh, what was the actual class name, x2 ability underscore Stun Lancer, Stun Lancer dot uc, and then I'll just be like, yeah, add that, and now I have specifically, I didn't put that in the right place, um, But yeah, now I have specifically that class that I can look at, and then I can steal it. And I can just be like, yeah, I need that in my class. Uh, cool, copy it over. Whatever. Only use the classes you need. If you don't need it, don't keep it around. Only add what you need. Try to be efficient. Second rule of good XCOM mod development is gratuitous comments. We'll look at Less Gravely Wounded real quick. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'll not say that. So, looking at the wound state that exists, uh, you'll see here, soldier isn't injured. That tells you that this gets the wound state, and if the soldier isn't injured, it returns negative one. That might be hard to tell without comments. Comments are just, uh, bloop bloop, two of those. It's a comment. And... Comments work differently in the UC files and the INI files. So let's look at the INI files. So we have your defaults, which are the same for pretty much every mod. And then we have the game data, which is where I edited uh, wound restrictions. And you'll see here that I added a few comments, listing the average wound times for various wound categories. To add comments in an INI file, you just put a semicolon, and then comment, and that's it. And this will help other people look at your code. This will help you look at your code when you've forgotten everything that you do because nobody has perfect memory except for those people who do, which are geniuses and I love them. It's good practice. Just comment everything. It'll help you. It'll help everyone else. And if you want to get help, like if you're trying to ask, then commenting your code will tell people exactly at least what you're trying to do with something, even if it's not exactly successful. Good, good, okay. Uh, third, uh, anytime that ModBuddy has extremely baffling errors, like for some reason closing the solution just breaks or compiling breaks and you're not sure if it's an error in your code or the builder itself, just close it. Just be like, yeah, close, save, yeah, I'll save. 
and then reopen it. So XCOM development duels, reopen. And let's go ahead and go into another mod. Let's look at uh, Ski Mask Face Prop. So here you will see the third thing you must do when creating a mod. If there are any assets that it uses, add them to the content folder. Any localization, you add it to the localization. Fourth thing you must do. If you want to replace existing lines in INI files, you want to put a minus the old line plus the new line. I showed this in the wound tables, but I didn't talk about it there specifically, which I should have. But yes, minus the old plus the new. Localization files work the same way, but you do not need a plus if you are creating a new category. So the bracket, category, end bracket, and then you can just put it under there. You don't need a plus for that. But if you're replacing something, you'll want minuses and pluses. Mod preview is the image that will appear first in your Steam Workshop when you upload the mod. It's not exactly necessary to have it be a particular thing. You can just uh, have it be whatever and then update it later. Readme will be downloaded with the project. Now the fourth thing you want to do, or is it fifth? I lose, I don't know how to count. The fifth thing you want to do is have a descriptive publish. So you've completed your mod. You know exactly what it does. You coded it. You understand exactly everything about it. So when you publish the mod, have a good description. Say exactly what it does. Tell us what your mod's about. Otherwise, we're not going to care. Try not to be too verbose. I know there's a little bit of writing skill that goes into it. But just try to make us understand why you made this mod, why it's important, why should we download it. And then you can create and upload mod and it'll go to the uh, Steam Workshop. And you can edit it there. And you can always change everything later. That's always true in mods. The sixth thing you should do, and I am left this for last because it is the most important. I'm actually going to go to my Steam Workshop specifically to show you why this is important. Whenever you create a mod, Test your mod. Test your mod. Run it. Get into the situation that does things and test it. Otherwise you get people yelling at you because your game crashes on load and I hope you manage to get it fixed soon because now I can't play my game. People get angry at you, justifiably so, because you crash their fucking games. So anytime you make a mod, you just want to go to debug and click start debugging. And you just want to test it. Uh, if it's a complicated mod and there's a lot of things to test, maybe send it to some friends, get them to test it too. But test it. You need to test your mods. Untested mods in the Steam Workshop are the worst thing ever and will hate you forever. Until you fix it. Then we'll be cool. If you have any further questions, I'm usually located on the Reddit subreddits uh, xdev. XDEV and XCOM2 mods. You can contact me there. My name is Quan. And if you have any questions, post them there because I'm not going to look at anything you post on this YouTube video because I don't care. Uh, otherwise, good luck making mods and further tutorials will be released at a later time. This has been Good Practices with Quan. Enjoy your day.